I've been getting a lot of requests to do a Mando helmet, and uh, I, I did long time ago. Look, I got Leon hair. But with the release of the new show came a lot of new designs, including this one worn by bo -Katan Wait a minute. Is that Katie Sackhoff? Yeah, it's Katie Sackhoff. It's Starbucks. Starbucks in Star Wars. Oh man, she's franchise jumping. Okay, I'm gonna wait for the episode where she rips the brain out of a droid fighter. For this build, you'll need EVA foam, contact cement, super glue, a Chicago screw, paint, a flexible filler such as Alex Fast Dry, a Hobart face shield, or some substitute. I got a whole bunch that would work. A heat gun, a sharpening stone, sanding gear, safety gear, Beskar steel, the soul of a battle droid, specifically one programmed to feel pain yeah, yeah, well, and fear, scissors, razor pens, and a box cutter. I'm making this primarily out of EVA foam, mainly cosplay apprentices what the foam, because he sent me just a ton of it. This is just a generic helmet template that I made a while back. I'll have that available to you guys, linked in the description down below. Once it's refined into a more specifically Mandalorian version, and also, you know, not on a cereal box. Oh, well, that's a paint marker that I'm using, by the way. It's not necessary, but I think the white contrast is just a lot easier to see on the darker foam. The traditional way that people have done these helmets is with Pepecura, which is folded paper and then solidify with resin. But this helmet is specifically meant for a cosplayer who's gonna be traveling. And if you've ever had a costume go through airport security, you know it's gonna take a beating. I can't tell you how much I loathe airport security. Or even just baggage handlers. I once drove to Atlanta from the frozen wasteland of upstate New York just to avoid airport security. Ready for hyperdrive? Yeah. Of course, I kind of had to, what with what I was carrying with me. Yeah, no, that'll look fine on an x-ray. But I digress. And where fiberglass will break, foam will just bend, absorb the impact, and bounce right back. Once those were drawn onto foam, I cut them out with the razor pen and occasional scissors. Then I traced and cut out the side parts. I heat form those pieces with a heat gun or paint peeler, not a hairdryer. There's minuscule chance that you could heat form regular EVA foam with a hairdryer, but not what the foam, it's too dense. But in the end, it'll be way more durable and be able to retain its shape a lot better. I carefully glued all the pieces together with contact cement. That worked better than I thought, except this wasn't carved correctly. So I gotta redo that one later. I sounded like a robot there because I'm wearing a paint respirator. You uh, you don't want to breathe this stuff. That wasn't as huge a problem as I thought it was just because it's gonna get cut away later when I do the eye holes. After that aired out a day later, I filled in the seams with Alex Fast Dry. I think that actually took three layers. Oh, ignore the quick seal. This is uh, it's an old clip. Pretended screen, there we go. Thanks, VizFX Jake. You got it, other Barry. And now that we have a basic helmet, which I don't know, I like I wanna say that's a French medieval helmet, but I think I'm just thinking of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Right, anyone else, just me? No? All right, moving on. The back was a bit too rounded, so I had to cut out a panel and then put back a shim because I can't eyeball anything worth a damn and contact cemented that all together. I temporarily taped it there just cause there's, there's a lot of stress on this. So I'm just gonna have that there while it dries. Then I did an extremely rough trace of the Mando outline on the helmet. Again, I'm just horrific at freehanding with a paintbrush. I chopped that out. As durable as what the foam is, it actually cuts pretty easily, just like butter. Then to figure out the faceplate, I shoved a sheet of regular old craft foam in there and traced an outline, and then just guessed at the rest. I cut that out and sliced out the cheek portion. I was hoping to use the cutout as part of that interior cheek alcove geometry, but it didn't quite work, and I ended up ruining a perfectly good piece of foam in the process, and that's just gonna go in the ocean and poison a dolphin. But this is actually exactly why I switched to the cheap foam here. If you mess up, you waste like 50 cents. So I quickly just traced and made a few more, taped those on there to do a test fitting, and I liked it, so I glued those on. I glued a point to the center, cause that's how you know it's a girl Mandalorian, and I filled that in with filler. I cemented those in place. You know, that'd be good as an orc helmet. I think all orc helmets are just failed Star Wars helmets. Those interior cheek alcoves were a lot of guesswork. Trial and error that luckily you won't have to deal with. It's all taken care of in the templates. I glued those two curves together with super glue. For some reason, I took a break to work on the earpieces. So there's these triangular pieces at the bottom, which I cut from scraps left over from the Thor hammer. But there, really, there's no reason why you 
can't cut them from scratch out of regular foam. Then I built the rest out of scrap foam and super glue. This helmet is slightly sparsely greeblied in comparison with the traditional Boba Fett or even Mando helmet. But the whole point of Mandalorian armor is you, know, you put your own sense of style and personality into it. So do what you want. You must do what you feel is best, of course. Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. These aren't the droids you're looking for. You don't want to use super glue for the main curved pieces because it doesn't flex, but the detail pieces aren't under any sort of stress, so they're fine. For the antenna axle, the swivelly part, that's the technical term, it's the swivelly part, I used a Chicago screw. For the antenna stock, or rangefinder mount, whatever you want to call it, I used an extremely thick piece of ABS plastic. You could cut it out of foam, but it might bend from the weight of the rangefinder, especially if you put lights and stuff in there, and that just looks silly. It'd be like a sad Mando. The point is sometimes you want to build for durability. The antenna needs a stopper to keep it from falling backwards or down below the eye line, so I made those out of craft foam as well. I guess I could have used wood or something, but I think that's a good place for the shock absorbency of foam, right? I also cut a hole in the outer piece just so that I could remove the antenna for maintenance if I ever needed to. When you layer foam like this, you get seams, which I'm not gonna say it's a bad thing because this is a machined object. I feel like there would be machine panels, especially since th there's all this technological stuff. You gonna tell me he's got two buttons to control his jetpack? No, there's like a whole computer system in that suit of armor. But I didn't see them in the show, so guess I'm just gonna fill them in. I duplicated that earpiece on the other side, but this time without the Chicago screw, just cause you know, only one antenna on this suit of armor. Then I sanded the filler material, I don't have footage of that because the sanding camera's power supply quit and that was not in the budget for this video. And segue! So we're just gonna go straight into the gluing time lapse slash Patreon scroll. This is where I thank all my patrons. Those are the people scrolling by who support these videos and offer the opportunity to support these videos from the people who are capable of supporting the arts. Beyond the material cost of the individual build, these videos take a tremendous amount of time to create and the tools and equipment are extremely expensive and frequently break down and need to be repaired and replaced due to natural wear and tear. I'm data mining. Okay, that has to sit and air out for a while. So while that happens, I'll be working on some of the detail pieces that go behind the ears. Ears, antennas, antennas. Yeah, sure, <laughs> let's go with that. I also made a band for the back of the... J hang on for a second, this is just driving me insane. I just flipped this cutting mat and j immediately I get glue on it. It wouldn't be a problem if it was just the super glue because super glue dries clear, but it had to get foam on it. There we go. I attached those with super glue. Then I built the rangefinder out of scrap craft foam. It looks like Katie's rangefinder is thinner, but I don't know if that's just camera angles. So I, I don't know, take that into account when you make yours. While each piece is drying, I held it in place with these ultra professional machinist tools. These are my one, two, three locks. Get it? This running joke has gone on far too long. When it was finished, I made the actual antenna stock out of quarter inch ABS plastic and I glued it on. But I didn't want to attach it right away because the paint might gum it up. Then I made the detail on the back of the helmet out of two millimeter craft foam. After it was glued on, I did a quick heat pass. This seals off the foam so hopefully I won't need to paint as many layers, but you never know. Then I began painting. The first I did a layer of flat black because it dries the fastest and the first layer, it's gonna get absorbed. It's really just so I can see if there are any outstanding imperfections that I'm gonna need to sand down later. Luckily, there weren't too many. I did the rangefinder separately, of course. Uh, just ignore the DRD infestation. My workshop is on a space whale. And it looked pretty good. So for the next layer, I use gloss black house paint, which dries shiny. To get that metal look, the base coat has to be shiny. That's why I'm emphasizing it. That's two coats. So I think uh, one more coat of black should even that out and make the whole thing shiny. So I just realized that I've been building some reference photos of two different Lady Mandalorians. The character with no lines has uh, a much simpler antenna detail than uh, Katie's does. So if you're specifically making Katie's helmet, then there's a little greebly there, and these edges are sort of filed down a bit, which you can do with the rotary tool. I'm using this cosplay silver from Miklais, still kind of as a base coat. I'm gonna paint blue on top of most of this. If you want it to be a totally even silver, then you have to do two or three coats. What I'm going for, one and a half. 
essentially. We'll give this sort of tarnished but shiny look. If you just want it to be chrome, then you can use Molotow and an airbrush or autochrome spray paint, which I did in the King Arthur helmets. Just you gotta be really careful of how thick you put it on, otherwise it'll, it'll drip. But my incredibly unique situation is I know that eventually I'm gonna have to repaint this because like I said, this is for a client. She was not thinking of Bogotan when she placed the order. This is just, I have time to screw around. Knowing that all this work will get covered up. Why do you do this, Jake? When it was dry, I covered it up with blue. She's got this owl pattern in the front, which, oh uh, yeah, I guess because with the visor, it sort of looks like a beak. Oh, hey, does that mean there's space owls in Star Wars? Or they just be Minot? I love how this show is fleshing out the Star Wars universe by answering these crucial questions. I was going for that Clone Wars brush strokes look, but I think it came out a little bit too visible. So I masked that off. I didn't mask that off. I just totally winged it and spray painted over it with blue. Just blue that I'm trying to get rid of because it's a bad seal and it leaks all over the place every time I use it. Just throw it out. It's garbage blue. Like It's literally dumpster fire blue. I don't know. It's hard for me to invest in a paint job that I know is going to get completely covered up later. So you guys do what you want. I'm, these videos are about the structure, you know? Not necessarily the artsy nonsense. The visor is made from a flexible tinted Hobart face shield, which I cut down to the right size and stuck in there. This was admittedly a very awkward process and difficult to film because the supports have to go in behind the shield. But after much finagling, I eventually got it in there. And that's it. That's how to make a female Mandalorian helmet. If you're interested in making this specific design, there's a template link in the description down below. I'm also in the process of making a complete female Mandalorian suit of armor, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see that, along with any of my other prop and costume builds. There's, there's a few, just a few. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when I post these, because my upload schedule is entirely at the mercy of when paint dries. And there's also a Patreon link, which if you're able to support me, then I'll be able to finish this project a lot faster and be able to move on to more audience requests. Oh, speaking of which, what's your favorite proper costume from The Mandalorian? Let me know in comments below. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy crafting. See you later.